All right. Hello, everyone. This talk will be primarily about space and rockets, and incidentally about how you can use both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes to deploy your microservices. So who are we? Uh, I'm Georgi, and I'm working at SAP, and this is Jules, or you might know him as Herr Jules, and he's an IBMer. And what's the common thing between us is that we're both working on the Irini project, uh, which makes us proud Iriniers, or Irini nodes, if that's your thing. So this talk will be in three parts. First, we'll talk about why is it important, why should you care about all this? And then we'll talk about what new possibilities this, um, we have in front of us. And at the end, we'll get our hands dirty, doing some interesting things for real. But first, let's talk about rockets. And probably the first thing that comes into your mind when we talk about rockets in a software context is, of course, startups, right? That's a pretty hot topic nowadays. And, but actually, what are some of the most important things for a startup to su succeed? And that's obviously a loaded question because there are many things to consider, like having a clear future, uh, having a clear vision of the future of your company, having a competent team, funding, marketing, and many, many, many more. But today, we would like to just talk about one thing, and this is speed. In other words, t striving to minimize the time to market for your product. And this is the, lem the length of time it takes from a product being conceived until it's being available for sale. And here's the thing, it doesn't matter how great or innovative your product is if you cannot get it to market before your competition does. Innovation and speed <coughs> go hand in hand. If you, and if you cannot master the latter, then your rivals will be racing ahead with new digital marketing products. So then, the question is, how do we get to market before our competition does? And of course, here there are many answers, there are many possible answers, but one of the key ones is by choosing the right technology. And it's important to separate which technology will help you in the growth of your business from these that will just eventually end up being another toy in the toolbox. And you should always try to choose a technology that lets you focus on your core business, not on the technology itself. And when it comes to choosing, uh, there are two main considerations in this case. You have simplicity, which is, provides great stuff like fast development, and you have flexibility, which is all about giving you the chances, the options, the, fr the freedom to do whatever you want to do. And usually the choice goes like this. You choose simplicity or flexibility, or you choose flexibility, but then you have a lot of complexity to deal with. And you probably know where we're going with this, because there's a pretty obvious example that can be given here. And as we all know, Cloud Foundry stands for this simplicity, for this great user experience and this fast development. Uh, and Kubernetes has a lot more flexibility, but then there's a lot of complexity to deal with all the times. So the next possible, the next logical question, I guess, is just which one should you choose? Which technology is better? And this is not a talk that aims to provide an answer to the versus question, but how about an idea? Why don't we instead duct tape the two rocks together and that way we can just use the combined power of both and we can race ahead of everyone else. And that is of course if you can maintain both of them efficiently at the same time and if you're able to make them stay on the same course. But can't we do better than that, Jules? Yes. We can do better, definitely I think we can do better with this amazing spaceship that has duck like both other rockets like Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry and has some additional power. And the spaceship was built by two projects here in the Cloud Foundry Foundation. It's um, two incubating projects, one is CF containerization, which is basically containerizing all the Cloud Foundry uh, control plane two containers and you can now use sound charts deployed on top of your Kubernetes. And the other project is Irini, which makes now your um, container orchestrator swappable with Kubernetes. And now you can deploy your, all your um, Cloud Foundry applications as native Kubernetes of objects. And that brings really good benefits. Like the first thing is you have one technology stack. So it's one technology stack you have to care of, you need to operate, you have one set of tooling, you don't need to operate Bosch anymore and Diego, everything is Kubernetes. And you can run on every cloud 
you can start from DigitalOcean, um, IBM Cloud provides uh, Kubernetes, even Amazon provides Kubernetes, so you can deploy Cloud Foundry everywhere. And it's really an important thing as a startup. So, but the most important thing here is that the, that you have a Kubernetes native implementation of Cloud Foundry and you have this native uh, Kubernetes objects. So all your Cloud Foundry apps are native Kubernetes objects. And now this brings like really new opportunities. Like you can CF push your application um, to the Kubernetes cluster and you can still use kubectl to directly interact with your Kubernetes cluster and push also apps that way and they all end up in the same network and they can say hello to each other, they can reach each other, <laughs> which is really cool. So we prepared an application um, which is called Fidelphia. It's a photo feed, kind of thing like Instagram, where you can upload photos. And yeah, we'll like quickly demonstrate that. Let's go to the uh, browser, which is here. So. This is how it's looking like. Uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger. All right, so we already uploaded some photos from the conference from Philly and from our team dinner yesterday. And um, what you can do is like you basically press here on upload photo. You can choose some photo that you want to upload. You give it a title like summit an author who uh, uploaded the f uh, picture, so that's myself. And I don't have like, so we need to refresh the page basically. And there we go, the picture is there. So this is what we are going to deploy today. Um, but how does the microservice look like? This is something that Georgi will tell you. All right. So as you said, we deploy this up as a set of microservices. Uh, in fact, we have three components. We have a web user interface, a backend API, and a database that stores our images. And the first two components, the user interface and the API, are pretty standard, so we can just see if push them with Cloud Foundry. But for the database, we chose to deploy it directly by Kubernetes. And a valid use case for that would be, for example, if you want to use a, if you have a requirement to use a custom implementation of your data store, that would be probably better provided as an independent container deployed by Kubernetes. And also, our app spans multiple namespaces. And since we're using Irini, Irini currently deploys to just one namespace. That's why the first two apps end up on the same place. And as far as the database is concerned, we can deploy to whatever we want. In this case, we just create a new namespace just for separation reasons. And for communication, uh, the web user interface and the API communicate through HTTP. And the API connects to the database through a TCP port, and this uh, default TCP port of the MySQL database, which is what we use. And this is something that it's not usually done with just vanilla Cloud Foundry applications. So let's actually start doing stuff for you. All right, let's get our hands actually dirty. Um, so um, just quickly go to the terminal and first like explain the setup. So on the left side, you see, we'll see everything that we do with Cloud Foundry. And on the right side of the terminal, you will see everything that we do with kubectl. In the upper left pane, you will see the um, a watch on CF apps. And on the other side, you will see the reflection on Kubernetes, like you see what's going on in the back end. And you will see the apps appearing in the um, in the Kube cluster. So this is basically a watch on kubectl pods in the Rini namespace. And we already pre-installed the web interface. And you can uh, actually see that the um, application is, um, here's the like the uh, CF representation and on the right side, there is the Kubernetes um, representation of that app. So let's open this uh, feed. Oh, it's already open, perfect. So, but it should be the same, yeah. So it's basically empty, and this is exactly what we expect because we don't have any backend yet, right? And if we inspect this uh, front end, and let's go to the console, 
we'll see, yeah, uh, status 404, not found, um, because we try to connect to the feed API, which is not deployed yet, and of course it cannot get anything. Great. So what we want to do is, we want to deploy the API. So let's, we are here in, actually in the Philadelphia repository. Um, it's available on GitHub. Um, everything is like well documented and we'll also, I'll tell the link at the end and you can try it yourself to deploy it actually afterwards. So um, yeah, in the Philadelphia we have the API directory and uh, this is just a Go application and we have a manifest there and we can just CF push and it will deploy it. And while this is deploying, you know all the CF push procedure, I guess, um, we can take a quick look at uh, kubectl get pods in the SCF namespace. This is, uh, oh yeah, thanks. In the SCF namespace, this is where all Cloud Foundry is deployed including Irini and the bit service. It takes a little bit longer today, probably because our cluster is in London and we are far away from there, who knows. So, there it is, great. Um, as said, this is what you would see when you call Bosch VMs. Um, but you see also a bit service here and Irini. Um, the bit service is actually uh, the master of the blobs and um, it has a Docker registry API that provides you a uh, like just the pull part of a, a Docker registry, and um, it actually so it really tells Kubernetes actually where it can pull the, Im the image from, and this is um, then provided by the bit service. So um, it gives you basically the OCI representation of your droplets. Great. So the staging is done and the app. Failed, oh my God. So, I'm pretty sure you know why it's failing. I don't, so I want to debug and see what's going on. Um, so let's take a look at the logs of this app. Feed ABI, uh, recent logs, cool. So I should get some logs. Ha, huh. so red lines, this is always like a good sign that something failed. Uh, index out of range in the main main go 52 so let's take a look what's going on there um, main go 52 boom uh, all right so yeah we use here an array and we want to access the zero index and it seems like this uh, array is empty and it's on the object recap and recap is recap services and recap services uses user provided so yeah, of course, we want to bind um, our API to the database that is not existing yet, right? So, of course, um, it should be like an empty um, object in the application, so because nothing is provided by the recap services. So let's take a look at um, the application that is failing, which is feed API. You can perfectly see here using the name, and of course there are just two apps and one is crashing, so we know which one it is. Um, let's quickly use kubectl to describe it. Describe pod this one in the namespace Irini. Let's see what's going on there. Let's make that bigger, and let's actually see what's going on there. So cool, um, namespace Irini, this is my app. Here's some labels, some information, like the GUID. And I'm interested in the environment variables because of the recap services. Uh, is it there? So recap application. Um, ah, here. Ha. Huh. So it's empty, as expected. So I think we need to fix that, Georgi. Um, you're the database master, so could you deploy the database part, please? Sure, let me see. <laughs> so, we need to install a database in Kubernetes, and in this case, we'll just install a standard MySQL. And probably the easiest way to do that uh, in Kubernetes is by using um, Helm. And Helm is just a package manager for Kubernetes. It manages packages 
of pre-configured uh, Kubernetes resources that are called charts. And we can also, also search for charts. And in this case, we're just interested in MySQL. And we see that we have a lot of options. But the one we want to use is the first one, which is the classic MySQL. So how do we install it? We have a script here. And all this script is doing is, is just calling one command. This is helm install. And that command uh, has the name of the chart that we want to install. And it has some information like, for example, what will be the name of the deployment in our cluster, in which namespace we want to install it, and what will be the name of the database that will be created for us automatically. So if we run that, uh, what this will do is it will go to a chart repository that contains the MySQL chart and it will automatically pull that in and it will apply it in the cluster. And since we said we want to uh, deploy it in the feeddb namespace, we can get the pods there and see if it actually did anything. And yeah, as we can see, we have a pod which is already running and it was deployed 20 seconds ago, so that seems legit. So now we have a, a running database, but the next thing is how can we authenticate to it? And by default, this Helm chart uh, creates a root user with a randomly generated password. And this password is stored in a Kubernetes secret, which we can easily get and then find the right password and then decode it and then use it. Or we can just do, we can just be real programmers and just copy this thing that they provided for us. And that will do everything for us. So if we echo that bar variable, we see that we have a password. Or at least we have some kind of string. We don't know it's a, if it's a password yet. But we can verify that. We can actually uh, SSH to the pod that's running the database. And we can manually authenticate there just to see if it's the right one. So if we do that, and we, since Irini, uh, that's, oh. Is that the right one? Probably. So if, uh, Arini currently doesn't support CFSSH, but we can still use uh, kubectl exec, which is basically the same thing. And if it ever loads, we should see that, uh, what? Oh, of course, I'm, I'm stupid. Uh, I should be getting the pods in the feedb namespace, and I should, uh, yeah, take the pod, which is actually running the database, not the API. So now it should work. And we're in the pod. Um, now we can just uh, use mysql-p. And we can copy the password that we got from the environment variable. And we're in. So that worked. And just to verify that this is the database that we need, if we show our databases, we, we see that we have the Fidelphia database that we specified when we installed the Helm chart. So now we can. We have a running database, we can authenticate to it, but we need to expose it if we want to use it as a user-provided service on the Cloud Foundry site. And there are many ways to expose it in Kubernetes. Uh, probably the easiest and the most straightforward one is to use kubectl expose with the node port type. And what this will do is it will create a service in the FDB namespace, and it will open a port in the Kubernetes node, and all requests to that port will be um, forwarded to, the, to our database. And in order to see which port was opened for us, because we cannot choose it, we can list all services. And the first record under the ports column, we can see that we have, we mapped the MySQL port to the 30128 to the node. So now we have everything we need in order to connect the database. And we can create a CF user provided service. And we just provide a JSON here. And that JSON, uh, has everything we need in order to connect the database. First, the password, and the password we have in the MySQL root password. So we can just copy that. Uh, database address is this is the, the IP of the node, and we can just paste the right port which we got from the services. And the DB name is Fidelphia, which is what we specified when we installed the chart. So this created the service on the Cloud Foundry side. And in order to bind it to our app, uh, we need to use the bind, uh, not the unbind, the bind service command. Uh, right, and that's, that way we bind the photobase 
uh, service to our feed API app. But in order to get the updates uh, in our app, we have to restage it, and that will basically delete everything in the Kubernetes cluster um, that has the feed API name. And after that, it will create it again, and it will create it with the new uh, environment variables with everything you need in order to connect the database. And you might be wondering, why don't we just use service brokers? And yeah, you can. I mean, it, we don't, we're not saying that you should use that way all the time. It's just a different approach that you can use. Maybe you don't know how to write service brokers, or maybe you just don't have the time to research it. Or maybe just you just want to quickly just try out something. And that way, um, you can easily do it. Uh, it's much faster than handling all the service broker things. And this should be staged soon. Um, yeah, so it's almost done. And after it's done, we'll see that the environment variable will be the correct one. And we have the app, which is creating, and soon should be running. Yep, nice. All right, so now we can use the same URL in the browser, and we sti still, still see that we don't have anything. But let's actually try uploading something, um, and let's see if it works. So let's upload this alien image. And as we can see, it's there. It's uploaded. It's in the database. Great. So let's quickly uh, talk about monitoring. And usually with Cloud Foundry, you would have Grafana or something like that, which you can use to monitor your, all your apps. But in this case, we don't actually deploy all the apps through Cloud Foundry. So Cloud Foundry doesn't know about our database, for example. So what can you do in that case? Um, and since we're using Irini, all of the apps end up in the Kubernetes cluster anyway. So we can just use a monitoring solution that just uses the Kubernetes uh, resources or tracks the Kubernetes spots. And one such thing is uh, Prometheus. It's called Prometheus. There is a Helm chart for it. And we already pre-installed it because uh, it takes a lot of time to uh, install it. And we can show it here in the Prometheus namespace. Uh, it has a lot of components, so it takes a bit of time to get installed, and we have it set up um, in advance. And we used local port forwarding in order to be able to access it from our local machine, and it should be on port 9090, right? And here you can write queries, for example, cube pod created, and this will show you some graph information about the creation of the pods, and you have some visual things here that maybe you can understand. And uh, we can also specify a concrete pod if you want to, that we want to uh, monitor. And let's just get the one that we just deployed. Just a feed API. And yeah, it appears. And that doesn't look that great. Um, it's kind of static, and uh, it's not visually that helpful. Um, so you can deploy Grafana on top of that. And Grafana has built-in support for uh, Prometheus. And you, that way, you can uh, monitor your apps that are running on Kubernetes, that are both Cloud Foundry and native Kubernetes, app, Kubernetes apps. So to summarize. All right. So um, in summary, so what did we do? We deployed a microservice architecture of that feed Delphia app. Uh, two of those um, uh, microservices were deployed by CF, and we deployed the database using um, kubectl, and we used um, Cloud Foundry uh, user services to actually bind the API part with the database in order that we can like store all the um, photos into the database and also get them from the database. And um, yeah, and we also show like you can use Cloud Foundry native monitoring uh, approaches like Prometheus, uh, which is actually part of the uh, Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation. So um, it's, and you can actually, um, if you like, deploy on top Grafana to have like updated um, uh, monitoring 
uh, charts. Yeah. So, why to choose between flexibility and simplicity? If you can have both, you can have flexibility, you can have simplicity with Irini and CF containerization. You have a unified operator user experience and you have overall reduced cost because you don't have to uh, operate both a Bosch deployed CF and Kubernetes. And with that, be fast, be first on the market, choose Irini and CF containerization. And with that, that's all we have for today. Um, there is a QR code to our Philadelphia application and there's also the um, URL, it's just irini.cf. With that, um, you uh, will land directly in the feed and you can upload some photos from the uh, summit and we will make the pictures available some when after summit and you can just reach out at us in the Irini dev channel on Cloud Foundry Slack. And yeah, I think we have a little bit time for questions left. Yeah, two minutes, so. <laughs> If there are any questions, feel free to ask.